the highest number of book that has been published for a subject in science is quantum physics. Moreover, as this subject has many branches, hence many confusions. Which book is suitable for me? How will I study? Do I need to learn some mathematics first? What are those? What is the sequence of study? How will I know whether I am going in the right direction or not? In today's video, I am going to answer all these questions and I am going to talk about the book that is suitable for you and what is the sequence, method and approach you should take to study quantum mechanics. This video is going to be your complete guideline on how to study quantum physics and which books you should read. So I request not to skip this video but to watch this video till the end. My name is Shonak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. Welcome to Introducing Quantum Mechanics Lesson Number 7. So first let us look uh, what are the topics that we are covering today. So first we will understand how is what would be the method for studying those uh, books. What is the mathematics of quantum mechanics? What are the books that are required for the preparation of the mathematical prerequisites before we jump into quantum physics? There is a note of caution and there are certain very interesting non-mathematical books also in quantum mechanics. What are the best books on the text part of quantum physics? A detailed analysis, sequence of study followed by YouTube lectures on quantum mechanics. So this would be the topics that we are covering today. But remember the books that I am telling that may be a little bit more in number. It is not that you have to procure, purchase or download or go through all the books. But as you see if there are many books and many knowledge then our understanding is much better. So first what we would see look into is what is the method of study. By method of study I mean to say that how shall we study quantum physics and what is the way. So quantum mechanics we can divide it as a non-mathematical approach people wants to study because extensive researches and a lot of books have been published some on conscious and spiritual level also so there is a non-mathematical approach. There is an approach which takes that okay first let us know what are the mathematical prerequisites that means what I need to know before going into quantum mechanics and then we go directly to learning quantum physics. So the non-mathematical approach, I am not saying it is at all bad, has got a lot of historical facts, basic overview, what are the contribution of different scientists over the scientific evolution and the chronology of events. The mathematical prerequisites is generally uh, students take to get a robust understanding. Yes, I know the mathematics, I don't have any problem and then I go into learning the physics. And here we learn the physics part of quantum mechanics after learning the required mathematics. So these are the threefold approaches to study quantum mechanics. But first we will understand here is what is the mathematics that we need to know, know and we need to see what are the books. Then we will see a little bit of non-mathematical approach and then we will learn into the heart of quantum physics that is the physics part of it. Okay, so first we will go the mathematics of quantum mechanics. What you need to know or what is absolutely necessary without which we cannot go and learn the subject. So we will divide this into what is called a non-relativistic quantum mechanics and what is called a relativistic quantum mechanics. Now I am not going to discuss further into relativistic quantum mechanics, what are those, actually these leads to quantum field theory which I have got certain uh, one or two preliminary videos but it is huge and we will be doing that. So the non-relativistic quantum mechanics is a general quantum mechanics that we are taking. Uh, there should be something uh, which is complex numbers we should learn. We should also learn linear algebra, calculus 1, 2, 3, 4, partial differential equations, probability theory and a little bit of Fourier analysis. So these six subjects or topics should be a must for learning quantum mechanics at a grad or an undergrad level until we are not specializing into pre-relativistic quantum mechanics. Now if you are interested to learn relativistic quantum mechanics all these six uh, factors will be there plus you need to know differential geometry, group theory, tensor calculus and a little bit of functional analysis. Now if you ask me how these are related I will make a, a separate video if you uh, put up the comments in this section 
but we are not going to discuss the relativistic uh, quantum mechanics right now. So these would be the uh, uh, mathematics part that we need to know. And uh, if you go to my channel Physics for Students, you will see that I have already doing a series of videos on the mathematics of quantum mechanics, where I'm covering complex numbers, linear algebra, mat matrix operation, bra and ket, that is Dirac notations and all those. So first what you can do is that directly go to my channel Physics for Students, go to the playlist Quantum Mechanics and you will find it has been properly designed lesson 1, lesson 2 in this way. More or less the lessons are being covered until the bra and ket operations. We have, I have just started the matrix operation and it is going on. So the first way is to go to my channel and check out the playlist. Okay, the second thing is this book by Tito Andresu and Torin Enrica, Complex Numbers A to Z. I'm just giving you a fair customer reviews from Amazon, although it doesn't really matter. There are a lot of good books which Amazon doesn't rank, but they are fairly good. These are the two people, Dorin Andrika and Tito Andrescu, and this is an excellent book of complex numbers. I'll just show you what are the topics that are being covered. It starts first with complex numbers in the algebraic form, the entire definition that it goes into geometric interpretation of algebraic operations. Then it further is going to complex numbers and geometry, uh, similar triangles, more on complex number and geometry, and one by one it covers everything. This is a nice book, Complex Numbers from A to Z. You can go ahead and check it. The next book would be Roland Dew's, this book. This is a little bit older version, but it is a fantastic book which completes everything regarding complex numbers. So you see, it starts with fundamental operation, fundamental transformation, and harmonic ratio, circles, cycloids, etc. Then it covers uh, circular transformations, uh, similitude, anti-graphy, everything. I mean to say the entire details of complex numbers are being covered. So this is going to be a really good book. I mean to say this is something uh, which which will cover up everything and you can see it is even covering up Mobius involution. The next book which I would prefer is this one. This is called Mathematics for Quantum Mechanics. Uh, Amazon gives a review of around 67% 6, and this is the person John David Jackson. So I will show you a little bit advanced version, but it contains the uh, most important parts of mathematics of quantum mechanics. So it starts basically with eigenvalue problems in classical physics. Then it slowly shows how the eigenvalue problems gets transferred. Then it covers Fourier series, Dirac delta operation. Then it comes to linear vector spaces, basis vector, change of basis, all those things, right? So uh, I can say you that this book is uh, very, very precise. It has got advanced mathematics. It explains Dirac delta function very well. You should have a good mathematical background to check this book out. It explains eigenvalues, eigenvectors and everything. I won't recommend this for early undergraduates, but I would rather, rather refer uh, for senior undergraduates. But this is an excellent book. I mean to say it directly goes at the heart of the problem addressing and explaining the mathematics of quantum mechanics, but it won't be for uh, early undergraduates, but for senior undergrads. Okay, I want to give a note of caution here. What I'm trying to tell you is this one. When you're studying complex numbers, especially for quantum mechanics, remember that you're just studying complex numbers, not complex analysis. Because when you're studying details of complex numbers, there is a tendency that you might go details into complex analysis. It is absolutely not required. Complex analysis is something which is related to pure mathematics and it leads to a lot of theorem proving, etc. No, all you need to do is that you need to know the basics of complex numbers, eigenvalues, operations, matrix algebra, that's all. So that is why I still would prefer you to go to my channel because I have made those videos on complex numbers directly meant for quantum physics, nothing else. So what I'm trying to tell you is that you just need to take up any decent book on complex number, any PDF online notes, graduate level book, and just do the mathematics part. That's it. I mean to say, please do not go more into complex analysis. That's a mistake. And you go deeper and deeper for getting the real part of the uh, mathematics. Okay. So here is another book, which is called Linear Algebra for Quantum Theory. Although you are 
free to learn linear algebra as itself. I, I think you are already learning that. So this book contains the elements of set theory, then goes into linear spaces, binary products, axioms of quantum theory. So it specifically concentrates on the linear algebra for quantum theory. The algebra or the linear algebra that is required for quantum theory. So what I would suggest is that a lot of books like Gilbert Stang's Linear Algebra, this is a little bit at Bar's book, Linear Algebra Done Right. Uh, George Silov's book is good and Sergey Lang's book is excellent on linear algebra. Pick out anything, just learn linear algebra. If you go to my playlist, you will also see I have already started dealing with linear algebra. So you need to know linear algebra to know the heart of the mathematics of quantum mechanics. That's it. You know, you don't need to be something specialist in linear algebra or complex analysis. Okay. So calculus one, two, three, four. I'm not mentioning any book because you already know partial differential equations. Obviously, I'm starting a new series of calculus very soon in my channel. Probability theory. I found this book of uh, uh, this one, Warner Lindy's probability theory. Pretty good. It's a big fat book around 541 pages, but covers everything and a little bit of Fourier analysis. Don't ask me now that how Fourier analysis would be related to uh, quantum physics. I need to make a special video on that because that requires an explanation. Okay, before going into the uh, mathematical prerequisites that we have understood, we, I have a note of caution. Now, what I'm trying to tell is that a lot has been written about quantum theory and there are a lot of misconceptions also. You will see that a lot has been misinterpreted. What I'm trying to tell is that uh, popular science uh, makes a wrong notion of quantum physics. Uh, popular science books, uh, I'm going to say, those who take up quantum physics like quantum mechanics in two minutes, the weird world of quantum mechanics, or the strange world of quarks and quantum physics, these books are not right. I mean to say, they give you they give you a kind of a wrong version of quantum mechanics, and there are books also called quantum mechanics and consciousness. I'm not saying these are wrong books. Definitely, it has been researched, but this popular science, you know, creates a kind of an ultra romantic environment in giving you a wrong interpretation of quantum mechanics, not making you aware about the real mathematics that is required and gives you a rosy picture and you go on and go on and you get a wrong notion of quantum physics and then when you come back, you are heartbroken because you have to do the real mathematics. So I would say just stay away from these type of misinterpretation and write the, uh, I would say learn the right thing from the right person. Okay, there are wrong claims which has also been made. Right. So we come to the non-mathematical books on quantum mechanics. These are light readings, but yes, obviously you can go. This is a wonderful uh, book by C. Carroll, uh, Something Deeply Hidden. You can go. How to Teach Quantum Mechanics Physics to Your Dog. This is not a good book, but anyway, it is very popular. This book currently I am reading. It is a super book. It is an excellent book by Manjit Kumar on quantum mechanics. And this is one is called Quantum Physics for Dummies. This is good and contains some amount of mathematics also. And this is again a great book, Beyond Uncertainty, which contains Heisenberg, Atomic Physics, more, all those things. So one, two, three, four, five. These are five good books which you can pick up anytime on a relaxed moment and you can learn. These two books particularly, which are mentioned in red down arrow, these are excellent books, highly authoritative, highly authentic and contains a lot of information. I think you are just really going to enjoy. Okay, we come now to the heart of quantum mechanics. This video that is one of the books that you should read. Okay, so the first book which, okay, I will come to the sequence later, right? First, I would like to give you a very critical evaluation. I would recommend the first one to be A.C. Felix's Introduction to Quantum Physics uh, Mechanics. This has given a 66% rating over Amazon but it is the best books to start with. I'll just show you quickly what are the TOC table of contents. It starts with Planck's constant in action, goes deep into Schrodinger equation, waves, sinusoidal waves, then it goes into position and momentum, then the energy and time dealing with Hamiltonian operator, a particle a box scenario, square well and barriers, harmonic oscillator. Then it further goes into observables and operators. You see here position and momentum, eigenvalue, eigenfunctions, delta function, then the angular momentum you see it has been dealt 
rigorously the hydrogen atom, I mean to say the potential barriers, etc., the identical particles, atoms. It is it is great. I mean to say it has got deep understanding. So I would like to summarize this book at it clearly describes various mathematical relations in an easy to read manner. All this book requires a little knowledge of calculus and a little knowledge of cas classical physics and you're really ready to go. It explains uh, almost clearly with appropriate math of text and the quality of writing is great and it encourages undergraduate students encountering these topics for the first time. So this is a book I would say it's great, it is simple, it is encouraging and it describes the mathematical relationships in a very precise and coincise manner. The next book which I would like to talk about is the famous uh, David Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. I really don't need to explain too much because it has been one of the classics. Simple, narrative, illustrative, very easy to understand. And it starts with formalism uh, at the initial linear algebra, functional spaces. So it is what I call the most important term, self-contained books. Whatever the mathematics that you really don't know you can learn from Griffith's book. So it is just a classic. I don't need to explain much about that. Okay, the next book is a wonderful book which is called Quantum Physics in uh, Quantum Quans Concepts in Physics. This has uh, got a rating of 90% and I will just tell you why it is. This is written by the British uh, physicist Malcolm Longyear and the style of writing is excellent. I'll just show you. So you see it starts with the discovery of quanta. Now remember that this book has content mathematics, mathematical equations. I mean to say there's a lot of mathematics but it starts uh, the mathematics from the eye of a historian. I mean to say from the historical perspective. So here is the physics and theoretical physics in 1895. Discovery of Planck body and radiation. Einstein quanta it moves to 19 to 1911. Then the Bohr hydrogen model has been discovered. So that is how it is there. Then it comes to Summerfield and Ern first uh, generalizing the Bohr's model, Einstein coefficients and the polarization and the Rydberg series quantum problem. Then it further goes into discovery of quantum mechanics, the collapse of old quantum theory, Heisenberg's breakthrough, right? Then it uh, develops Heisenberg's matrix mechanics and that has been further, uh, uh, I would say, improvised by Dirac's quantum physics. Then it goes into spin and quantum states. It's very historical, step by step, but it still contains a lot of mathematics. Interpretation of quantum mechanics. Then it, so that's it. So it is a conceptual guide for physics, mathematics, uh, and who knows his or her calculus. And it is a detailed historical accounts, including Dirac's relativistic equation. The difference between quantum mechanics and wave mechanics is very clear, and it's a wonderful work of history which teaches the subject the way it comes. So it is indeed one of the greatest books uh, where you really enjoy learning quantum physics, but you learn a lot through the uh, pages of history. And it is a wonderful journey, I can tell you. Okay, the next book would be Leonard Susskind's Quantum Mechanics, a theoretical minimum. It is a golden book, I would say. It has got a 66% rating. I think it should be more. And this is Professor Leonard Susskind. Uh, let us look into, because the book is very short, so these are the things which are given. Uh, the table of contents is pretty simple. I mean to say, you really won't be able to make up this book, but I have read the book. I'm giving you in shortcut what it is. It is one of the best explanations of quantum mechanics. I can tell you, it goes deep and philosophical, and it explains the mathematics part very clearly. It is lucid. It is very easy to understand, and it is just like a storybook. It's like a kind of, kind of a non-fiction that you're reading. So it starts with classical and quantum. What is a classical system? What is a quantum system? Then it will teach you what is a system. Then he will take you to the experiments, results of experiments, then further into spins, vector spaces, etc. Remember, this is also a self-complete book. That means the mathematics is being taught to you. Okay, the next one, it is a little bit off-bit, I know. It is called Quantum Computation and quantum information. It's got a heavy rating of 87%. These two gentlemen, Michael A. Nielsen and Isaac L. Schwang, both of them have written it. Now, the basic part is that it starts with the uh, historical part, but it starts with quantum computing. 
So it won't be a textbook quantum physics book, right? It, it will be something which is much more detailed on the global arena covering everything in the industry which is related to quantum mechanics. So you see quantum computation, single, qubit, multiple, etc. Quantum algorithms. Then it goes further into introduction of quantum mechanics. You see linear algebra has been taught entirely eigenvectors, Hermitian operator. Then uh, he goes into postulates of quantum mechanics, then the density operator, right? Then further you will see it also covers the measurement, the C0 gets, right? And then go into a quantum Fourier transform, right? I was just telling you that what is the relation between quantum physics and Fourier transformation. It is cleared over there. Then comes the algorithm, the oracle, computer, harmonic oscillator, physical apparatus, a lot, lot of things, optical cavity, ion traps, nuclear magnetic uh, uh, resonance. Then here you see quantum error correction. I mean, you see, it is a complete book. If you really want to read it, it would be great. Uh, it, it covers everything related to quantum mechanics, not only to the quantum physics that we learn. Right. So here you see von Neumann entropy, quantum relative entropy, then quantum information, Shannon's noiseless, Shannon coding, entropy exchange. I mean, it's, it's a fabulous book that it is there. So uh, I, I would like to say you that this, this, sorry, this would be a kind of a one-time uh, book. It's a one-time read and it's, it's super. It contains almost everything, the industry and the science that pertains to quantum mechanics. So it, it is great. I'm coming to one of the greatest book written ever in the history of quantum mechanics and I'm sure uh, why it is so. It is written by Ramamurthy Shankar. It is given a rating of 74% but I think it should be more than 98%. The reason I will tell you why it is, you see this book, it starts with the mathematical introduction linear vector spaces, basics, etc. Then it reviews the classical mechanics. That means it is again a self-contained book which is making you aware, making you revise through the classical mechanics. Then it goes into particles and waves, then postulates, simple problems in one dimension, harmonic oscillator, etc. Further, if you see this book also contains symmetries at an early stage. I will come to that. Hydrogen atom spin, addition of angular momenta, Time dependence, scattering theory, it is almost around 660, 50 pages. Now, why I am rating this principle of quantum mechanics? Because there are reasons. Now, the level is more mathematical and it tackles more deeply, more subjects than Griffiths. I know you might criticize me, you are, you are welcome to criticize, but I found R. Shankar's book much, much, I won't say better, but much more detailed, much more easy to understand and much more comprehensive than Griffiths. It provides a strong mathematical foundation as well as review for the intermediate classic mechanics, which Griffith doesn't. Griffith gives a math mathematical overview, but Arshankas does it more effectively, right? Hamiltonian formulations, etc. It contains two big chapters on prerequisites, and that is the ad addition, which shows that the author is determined to making you actually understand the subject. It's not that just for the sake of doing that. This is a very important part of R. Shankar's book. Another important thing is that you see, generally uh, path integral and symmetries are being discussed on a much later part of quantum physics. Here he discusses right at the beginning because this is required. And he introduces path integrals and symmetries in a much better way. Introducing path integrals actually helps us to demystify them and uh, introducing symmetries early on helps us with always keeping symmetries at the back of minds because symmetries are the ultimate. So what I can tell you is that the book of R. Shankar is just a fabulous book. It is detailed and it, it seems that the professor has taken the responsibility to make you learn about quantum mechanics, just not give it to me. Okay, nothing much to take about this great man, Feynman Lectures on Physics. It has given a rating of 88%, perfect, absolutely classic, Richard P. Feynman. And I have just given a table of contents overview from internet because if you really don't want to purchase that book, you can always see it online from here, right? You can just get it from here. Okay, the sequence of study. This is very, very, very important. How will you study and what are the books that you should read? First, I would say read R. Shankar's book. The reason is that 
it contains the basic, it contains a lot of prerequisites of mathematics and then it goes into the heart of quantum mechanics. Second, obviously Lenner says kind of quantum mechanics, deep, deep into the details at the heart of quantum physics, making you understand a lot of things which others book won't. Third would be introduction of A.C. Phillips quantum mechanics. This is an absolute classic book. Fourth would be quantum concepts in physics. Why? Because uh, after Arshankar's and Lena Suskind's book, you will see that when you're learning a little bit on the historical perspective, things are becoming more clear. And five, on the fifth part, I would say lectures of Feynman. The sixth one would be Griffith's book. And the seventh one, obviously not very relevant. It contains a lot about other than physics, that is quantum computation and information by Michael Nielsen and Isaac Lishua. I know that you might agree that why not Griffith first, but after reading Arshankar, after reading Leonard Susskind and those books, I can tell you that, um, you know, it is a kind of a convention that Griffith's uh, book should be read at first, but you can trust my words and start, start reading those books, you won't be disappointed. Okay, lastly, what are the quantum mechanics? What are the YouTube lectures? What are the YouTube lectures I need to say that you should watch? Okay, first would be definitely Leonard Susskind's, uh, you know, this is a collection of lectures at Stanford and is a collection of 10 lectures which almost covers uh, the entire quantum mechanics, an hour or so more, but it is not that theoretical minimum. It has got, it has got a separate playlist in Stanford about theoretical minimum. Okay, the next would be Cosmo Learning. Uh, this is a wonderful uh, set of lectures. This is at Oxford Lectures and this is uh, terrific. It's a collection of 27 lectures uh, explaining much on the quantum physics part. So I'm going to say it's super. The next would be IIT ISS, uh, IISC, that is NPT DL HRD. I think this is Mr. Ramamurthy explaining it's a collection of 31 lectures. It's great. You can go through that. And lastly, I would say MIT Open Courseware, uh, where this is a series of how many? 115 lectures which you can go through. Okay, the last question that remains is that if you're interested on those books, where will you get those books? I would say please do write to me. Okay, and you can uh, WhatsApp me, you can email me to get those books. So this is a kind of a comprehensive understanding on the books how to go, what are those details, and how would you learn what is the sequence and the mathematical prerequisites. So I'm immensely grateful and thankful for you for watching this video. You will, you can subscribe to my channel Physics for Students, click on the bell icon and click on all to get all the notification from Physics for Students. You can also contact me uh, through this email ID for uh, acquiring these books, which I can email to you. I've got a separate channel which is called General Relativity Explained on YouTube, where I am teaching mostly uh, purely on general theory of relativity. Further, if you want to follow me, you can through my Facebook, LinkedIn and Instagram page. So that's all for today's video. Please do let me know in the comment section uh, how was the video and do let me know if you require some of the books. I will be happy to share with you. Thank you very much for watching this video. Stay safe and happy and may God be with you.